The Knockmore railway line winds through the hills of the South Antrim countryside, passing through towns, villages, before bringing you into the heart of Lisburn City. And for decades it fought a silent battle against the Bleach Green Line. A battle for life or death that to this day holds no real conclusion. A battle so anticlimactic that nobody really noticed it was happening. But that invisible war in particular shaped the future of Northern Ireland's railways. And today, we are going to be exploring the past, present and future of Northern Ireland's great railway rivalry on today's video for Fun the Nine. The 85 year period from 1848 to 1934 was the period of the most intense and rapid development of the Northern Ireland Railway network. Within those 85 years, the Ulster Railway opened what was known at the time as the Dublin and Antrim Junction Railway. This railway line opened in 1871 and it stretched almost 21 miles through the South Antrim countryside, from Lisburn to Brookmount to Glenavy and all the way up to Antrim itself. Costing £200,000 to build at the time, which is £30 million today, the Knockmore Line as it is more commonly referred to soon became vital to the local economy of South Antrim and this stayed as such for the most part of a century. One of the reasons the Knockmore Line was so vital to the economy of South Antrim and indeed the entire nation was due to the fact that before 1934 the Knockmore Line was the only viable option for getting trains out of Belfast and sending them further north to large urban centres such as Ballymena, Corian or London Derry. There was however an alternative to the Knockmore Line for trains looking to head further north, the Green Island Loop Line. The one major flaw however is that the Green Island Loop Line did not allow for trains to be driven straight out of Belfast and towards Antrim. Instead a change of engines had to be conducted and this meant that the train had to head up past the Green Island Junction, stop the train, disconnect the locomotive, reverse the locomotive down to the rear of the train, connect the locomotive to the train, and then reverse the train in or out of Belfast depending on which direction the train was going. Now obviously, this added considerable amounts of time onto journeys and that is why a lot of freight and passenger services chose to use the Knockmore Line instead as it completely eliminated the issues presented by the Green Island Loop Line. Northern Ireland's railway system operated like this for decades for any trains looking to head north of Belfast. During the 1920s, Northern Ireland was going through an extremely turbulent time for politics and its economy. In fact, the country was being created. The partition of Ireland saw this island split into two separate nations, Northern Ireland, which remains in the United Kingdom to this day, and the Republic of Ireland, which saw itself leave the United Kingdom and become an independent state the only country in history to ever do so. The partition of Ireland cast Northern Ireland Railway companies into doubt as both revenue and traffic volume suffered heavily during the time. However, the great minds in charge of the country's railway network believe the decline was merely temporary and the directors of the London, Midlands and Scottish Railway Company LMS, decided to approve two major railway projects to undergo construction. These projects ended up being the last ever railway projects undertaken by a private company in Northern Ireland. The first project was replacing the old railway swing bridge in Coleraine that spans the River Ban with a new bascule bridge which was completed in March of 1924. The second project to be started was the development of the Green Island Loop Line which we now know today as the Bleach Green Line. Now this wasn't the first time that people had discussed finding a way out of Belfast towards Antrim without having to change engines at Green Island. The main suggestion was to build a tunnel straight through Cave Hill but an addition to the loop line was deemed more realistic cost wise as you can imagine. A loop addition actually had the go ahead from Parliament since 1873 but the project was long abandoned due to the cost of it. The reason the project cost so much was due to the fact that the gradient to get trains up and over the hills would have been far too steep. Combine this with bogland and mudflats on every side and you have one seriously costly dilemma. 
so it was deemed better to just not bother and either run reversals through the Green Island or run trains through the Knockmore line. But now in the 1920s, the ability to finally build this new line was here and the LMS are ready to go for it. An extract from the board minutes of the Northern Counties Committee reads, The committee resolved that a scheme from near White Abbey Station to Monkstown be approved and that the board at Euston be recommended to sanction the provision of the additional capital involved. One mile and 24 chains as a double line, estimated cost £200,000 and government agreed to contribute 75% of the cost of the labour involved. The line from Green Island to point of the junction at Monkstown to be changed from double line to single line. The proposal was approved by Euston Board at the meeting held on the 15th of November 1927. And with that, work on this new railway line has put into full swing. During the Bleach Green Line's construction, 240,000 cubic yards of earth were excavated for use in creating the new embankments that would carry the train out of Belfast at a gradient of 1 in 75. This new main line would have two new viaducts that would span Valentine's Glen, whilst also passing over the original down line that takes trains towards Carrick Fergus and on towards Larne. They did this by passing the down line underneath the new main line in creating what is still to this day the only burrowing junction on the island of Ireland. This new main line viaduct was 630 feet long and a total of 70 feet from the stream in the glen up to the top of the viaduct itself. The Larne line viaduct was at a smaller stature, 400 feet long and 40 feet above the stream below. Over 32,000 tonnes of concrete and over 700 tonnes of steel were used in the construction of these two new viaducts, with a total cost of £65,000 at the time, which is roughly £6 million today. They also built five new major bridges alongside the new viaducts at Bleach Green, Jordanstown, Monkstown, Owls and the Doak Road. For this new addition, they also decided to install a new electrical colour light signalling system which was operated from a new signal box at Green Island. This new signal box controlled points at Bleach Green, Green Island and the Monkstown Junction Triangle. This new electronic signal box had a 62 lever frame and could control a point from up to 2 miles away. This may not seem impressive at all by today's standards, but at the time it was by far a state of the art development. The entire project was completed in a three year period, with the viaducts themselves taking just 15 months to complete. This feat of engineering was thanks mostly to the fact that the Unemployment Labour Exchange saw unskilled workers undertake work on the project as part of a large labour force. Everyone was quite excited about the new loop line, and so much so that the railway company arranged a date for a grand opening of the line. The date was set for the 17th of January 1934. On the big day, a special train journey set off on the new line, drawn by the new engine number 50, Duke of Abercorn. The train set off from Belfast to Valentine's Glen, where a temporary platform had been built to allow guests of honour to alight for the opening ceremony. These guests included, but were not limited to, the Prime Minister, Sir Josiah Stamp, the President of the LMS, Mr W. V. Wood, the Ulster Governor, the Duke of Abercorn himself, and many other important figureheads of the nation and the railways at the time. After the ceremony, the train then crossed Valentine's Glen for the first time using the new viaduct, and headed up to Portrush where a luncheon was served for a party of 237 guests in the Northern Counties Hotel. The President of the LMS was quoted saying, The Green Island Loop Line had been thought about for many years, but now, as an accomplished fact, it is a double success both for relieving unemployment and improving transport. It is notable from an engineering point of view and also had no mean artistic merit. It is a gesture of faith in the future of railways at a difficult time in their history. The new railway line now opened up a whole world of positive benefits, such as the creation of a new direct line to the northwest, a saving in journey time on routes north of Belfast, opening up access to the tourism potential of the North Antrim and London Derry coasts, improving passenger safety through the introduction of a state-of-the-art signalling system, and improved passenger comfort with the introduction of powerful new locomotives and luxurious passenger train rolling stock on the route which boasted a buffet car. And with this drastic change to the makeup of Northern Ireland's railway system, the Green Island Loop Line became a vital part of keeping the Northern Ireland economy running. This meant that the Knockmore Line was no longer the vital and well-needed connection it once was, and now had to either accept its fate at being second best, or find something else to be better at. 
Thank you for watching today's video, and one thing I just wanted to point out is that over 90% of the people who watch these videos aren't subscribed, so if you're looking for good Northern Ireland transport related content coming in the future, please consider subscribing as it helps spread the word of our campaign. But other than that, I'll leave you alone. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.